media recognition from Bloomberg, Reuters, recycling trade publications, patented process for 100% recovery of critical metals, including cobalt, lithium, nickel, manganese, aluminum. American Manganese is focused on recycling lithium-ion batteries for electric vehicles. American Manganese trades on the TSX Venture, AMY, the US, AMYZF, and Frankfurt 2AM. For more information, visit AmericanManganeseInc.com or phone me, Larry Ray, at 778-574-4444. You're listening to HowStreet.com Radio, available online at TalkDigitalNetwork.com. Welcome to HowStreet.com Radio, the online source for market opinions. Here is Jim Goddard. My guest is home ownership consultant Ross Kay from the WealthyHomeowner.ca, Canada's authority on home ownership. Welcome back to the show, Ross. Hey, thanks for having me back, Jim. Ross, as usual, we have a lot of questions from our listeners. Our first question from Kitchener, Ontario, asks the following. My wife and I have been at home as a result of the lockdown, and our long-held jobs are now at risk. Should we be considering selling our home now, or should we wait? Wow. That one really gets home, doesn't it? Um, yeah, the uh, the lockdown, I think we're only starting to see Jim the fallout of what happens when a government decides to lock down an economy. I mean, governments, I guess, you know, I, I guess we have to accept that uh, they pick winners and losers in life often. Um, I guess they do it when uh, you've got family members that are extremely sick and the government decides what medications are available to you and what it, what medications are not what age they'll allow you to have an operation, what ages they'll allow you to not, when the government will decide they'll allow you to have treatment, and when the government will decide that you you can no longer have that treatment. Um, we're in a situation now, Jim, where the government decided that they were going to lock down our economy for 14 days and then pursued a lockdown right now in perpetuity. There is There is no... There is no answer available to families today when this lockdown will end and the longer it goes on the more financial damage is being done to Canadian families and this topic doesn't come up at any time and I think it's unethical the topic doesn't come up we've been now Jim what four months into this situation one to five months into this situation governments have had more than adequate time to establish a strategy to protect the Canadians that are at most at risk during this lockdown and to protect the Canadians that are at the least at risk, but at the, those families that are watching their wealth be destroyed. This family in Kitchen Waterloo sounds like they're, they're one of the, one of the, the consequences. When we look at our data, Jim, we're looking at the entire universe of, of Canadian families in the home ownership stock. So we cover families that are just moving into their homes at the end of June, end of July, all the way up to families who've been in their homes 60 and 70 years, some of them. And that means we have a, a viewpoint on those families that changes across the continuum of, of homeowners in this country. We know right now today approximately 1.2 million families 1.2 million families are at risk of being wiped out financially, all of their wealth destroyed as a consequence of this lockdown. That means those families have given up everything, all the wealth that they have built up up until today's date towards saving other Canadians' lives. The government is solely responsible for this happening. No one else. When we're doing housing analysis, because we have such a huge lead time in the market, we're able to tell people where the market's going to go and giving them ample ad ad advance notice where they can make a decision. If Even if they delay a decision, it's such a marginal uh, uh, change or risk they have because we know how hard, how, hard, how housing markets go up and we now know how housing markets go down. This lockdown is a case in point. We knew because of where the lockdown took place in each province across Canada, where the 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 amount of time uh, that was going to be available for people to extract themselves from the market, this 
this uh, listener in Kitchener, had they been receiving our advice, we would have been telling them to exit the market in June or July. Now, we would have had to have been understanding that they may not be able to find a rental unit to move into at that time, and that means that maybe they would have had to have moved in August. But that would have been our advice to them back in March. Uh, had they been seeking advice from us uh, two years ago, we would have had them liquidating in the fall of, uh, of uh, planning on liquidating the fall of 2016 in Kitchener-Waterloo and extracting themselves, but having their house in the market in the spring of 2017. We would have been proven correct in that, that assumption too. What this family is facing is, is, a, is a degree of wealth destruction, Jim, that I, I have never seen in this, this particular, in this, because normally this would be an, an, a, an age group of families, those below 42 to 44 years of age. Um, there are families that are just going to be wiped out, and I don't know, Jim, if they're going to recover over the next uh, 40 years. I really don't know. I mean, when you go back to starting from zero again, then the, the compound annual growth rate you have to have on your returns are so much higher when your, your period of time is half, it's uh, certainly not going to be from home, from home ownership wealth. I guess the flip side is, is you know, we're going to have low interest rates, uh, you know, certainly for the next, uh, the next decade probably, I, 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 because we can't see a way of them getting out of it. But these listeners really bring up a question. They really bring up a legitimate question. When we look at the number of deaths that has taken place in Canada because of COVID, and if we remove the, you know, just the bad practices that were going on at nursing homes, we have to look at the other families whose, you know, the rest of their life is going to be damaged. Which, which you experience as time goes on, at least what I've experienced as time as goes on, you know, I now look at my life as the number of probable years that I have left to live. That puts a, a real urgency on my life, and it puts more value on each day that I, that I have available. I look at my parents. You know, my parents are, are in their 80s. Okay, so each year, each month that they get, you know, could could possibly be, you know, 50% or 33% of the remaining years that they have to live. And they're not going to feel the consequence of this unless, you know, they they followed bad practices or they remained uninformed over the course of this lockdown. The government by now, Jim, in, in our opinion, as of May the 1st, the government should have been able to get the economy back going and getting things uh, back in line. That would have allowed the housing market to unravel at a far slower pace than it's unraveling right now. You can expect to hear across this province crazy claims of July housing stats. I see the first one was released from my home board here in uh, in uh, Burlington. It's going to be released tomorrow as a, as a press release where they're claiming house prices, average price is up 16% year over year in July. Well, of course it's up 16% year over year July. First time buyers have left the market. Those are the, the buyers who are most at risk of this lockdown because they may not have employment. How many employers are we already seeing entering bankruptcy protection in this country? Those are jobs that are gone. The government hasn't taken that into consideration. So for your listeners in Kitchener, uh, uh, Kitchener, this is what I'll, I'll tell you. You cannot rely on the government for anything at all because all they're considering is their votes, whether or not they will remain in power. And they will do and manipulate anything they can to stay in power. They are not making rational, fact-based decisions on this lockdown that are designed to uh, work in each group of the population. They're just simply saying, we can't afford to have a death on our, on our doorstep at the next election time. Well, what I would say is the truth of the matter is this. They make those decisions every time they spend a dollar. They make those decisions every time they decide what medication someone dying of cancer can get or cannot get. They make those decisions every day when they decide whether or not they're going to have the homeless people with shelter or living in the gutter. They make those decisions every day when they decide whether to fund hospitals adequately or not. 
They make those decisions every day when they send our soldiers into a killing zone in some other country. What's happening now is a political decision. The federal liberals don't want to have a death recorded against them as they go to the polls next time. Your provincial governments do not want to have a death recorded against them next time they go to the polls. This is not based on fact-based intelligence. If it was, why does Canada have the a death per infected rate twice as high as the United States of America? And why hasn't mainstream media in Canada reported that? These are publicly available statistics issued by the government of Canada and other governments around the world where you can get a calculator and calculate this. Canadians, Canada, has a low, a higher death per infected rate from COVID, double of what it is in the United States of America. Yet all we hear in Canada is how, how insane Donald Trump is down in the States and how bad, how, bad, how many cases there are in the States. Well, what I want to talk about is the number of deaths in Canada and why are we twice as bad as the United States in terms of those who be, who, who we find to be infected? Because this, Kitch, this family in Kitchener has probably given up, probably given up at least 20 years of their wealth to save other families in Canada. It's time we ca- stop talking about politics. We ask our citizens to be accountable for the decisions they do and do not make and we allow those who can go on living their lives uh, today, in a, health, in a healthy and safe way, be, to be allowed to do that. Instead of picking and choosing which Canadians are going to be destroyed financially. We'll have more with Ross K. right after this. Avon Resources Limited is a gold exploration company with significant projects in British Columbia and the Yukon. Trading on the TSX Venture Exchange, symbol ABN, and the OTCQB, symbol ABNAF. Surrounded by world-class gold deposits and mines, Avon's 23,000 hectares Forest Kerr Gold Project is located in the heart of the Golden Triangle in northwestern BC. For more information, visit us at avonresources.com. Welcome back. We're chatting with Ross K. Ross, a listener heard a podcast that included comments from Eric Bond from CMHC about Vancouver. He indicated this CMHC market analyst said condos and detached homes are separate markets with separate trajectories. Can Ross explain what CMHC was talking about? I can explain what he's talking about, but he can't explain what he's talking about. And the talking point that the listener referenced is, is a case in point. The condo market and the detached market are not two separate housing markets. They do not have separate trajectory. They are one part of a, an entire housing market with a group of homes classed by price point. If condos are a lower priced condo, then they are a lower priced home. If a detached home is a higher priced detached home, then it is a in the higher priced class of homes. The same class of homes that higher priced condos are in. The reason why this, the, he believes that there are two separate markets is because the number of sales that take place in condos, specifically in Vancouver, has been increasing now for a couple of decades because they don't build enough single detached homes. The policy choices that have been made by city politicians, uh, and, and for whatever reason have led to more condos being built. Those condos, have increasingly filled the uh, entire continuum of uh, house prices in Vancouver. You have cheap condos, you have super luxury class condos that are just expensive as single detached homes. So what part of the condo market was he talking about? Obviously, if the condo detached market are separate markets with separate directories, so should each class of condo be a separate market with a separate directory, which of course is hogwash. Vancouver is a singular housing market made up of different categories of homes based on the value those homes are are determined to be at today. Those valuations can quickly change. It is also in the shape of a pyramid where the lowest price condos, there's more of them. The most expensive homes, there's the least of them. It forms a triangle, a pyramid. This is why it's called an MLS house price pyramid. It's why there's not a realtor in Canada who can prove house prices change in 31 days, because they don't. 
this listener is hearing a CMHC market analysis, who I am sure is a nice person. They genuinely care for the job. I can't see, Jim, CMHC hiring uh, people who are who are mean or people who are, are, are uh, even overly arrogant, for that matter. It, this fellow believes what he's talking about. Um, and he cares about what he's probably talking about. Like, he probably genuinely likes his job. But what I'll tell the, the listener is, he's not qualified to occupy that position when he makes comments like that. CMHC, somehow, some analysts with CMHC believe that the Canadian home buyer and homeowner should make housing decisions, at least partially, based on what CMHC is forecasting. This has all taken place over the last couple of years. You would never have heard a CMHC analyst ever even suggesting remotely that a Canadian family should even remotely listen to CMHC forecasting or intelligence in making a home buying, selling, or owning decision. But somehow, since Evan Sedell took this role and they've expanded their uh, their portfolio of research into into markets they're not even remotely qualified to understand. They now believe they should they can start give housing advice to home to home buyers, home sellers, and homeowners. I've just debunked fully with with this this analyst uh, had to say. Condos in detached homes are part of a singular housing market that is in the shape of a pyramid. That pyramid exists in every city in Canada, every town in Canada, any place where there's a hundred homes in Canada. Those all those pyramids exist. It isn't based on the design of the home. It's based on the price point of the home, which has a quality component. What moves in time is the quality of home that people are buying or not buying. That becomes illusion. That illusion becomes believed. That belief ends up in CMHC's uh, housing market in analysis uh, six months, a year, a year from now. So what I'll tell the listener is this. Condos in detached are not two separate markets. They're one of the whole. The reason why this missing middle myth has now been perpetuated by planners, and we just see in, in the city of Toronto now, they're enacting policies to create missing middle, only means they're widening the part of the pyramid without dealing with the issue of how high it goes into the sky. The best housing pyramid in the world, Jim, the best housing power housing pyramid in the world is the one that is sitting upside down because that controls house prices long term. If you're not building enough single detached homes and you're building more condos, you're simply making the house price pyramid wider and flatter, which causes house prices to increase more rapidly. This market analyst is just simply someone who is ne- hasn't taken decades to understand how the housing market works, how the home trading cycle works, and how each of the the stakeholders in the housing industry interact with one another. We'll have more with Ross Kay right after this. Engineer Gold Mines is focused on the exploration and development of the historic high-grade Engineer Gold Mine situated 32 kilometers southwest of Atlan, British Columbia. Engineer Gold Mines is fully permitted for surface and underground exploration with the drill program now underway. Engineer Gold Mines Limited trades on the TSX Venture Exchange, symbol EAU. For more information, please visit us at engineergoldmines.com. Don't miss out. Stay informed. Receive the HowStreet.com Weekly Recap with thought-provoking podcasts, radio, and articles delivered to your inbox. Sign up for the HowStreet.com Weekly Recap on our homepage at HowStreet.com. Welcome back. We're speaking with Ross K. Ross, a listener from Abbotsford, B.C., which is about a 45-minute drive east of Vancouver, asked, My spouse has remained employed as a government worker during the lockdown. I've been on CERB, the Canadian Emergency Relief Plan. We now have four months of data to look at, and it may be a rational choice for me to remain at home with our two kids for the next three years. Ross, do you see many families making this kind of choice? Uh, This sounds like a trick question, Jim, because uh, you used the word spouse and you didn't identify... uh a guy or a girl. 
Does it matter? <laughs> well, in my opinion, no, it doesn't. Because uh, I guess the, the question is well written. I mean, that, that that's a great question. Because that alleviates me from making a statement that could uh, could be misconstrued uh, by our listeners. So people don't really understand what the financial cost uh, to a family is to have most families, most families, not all. So so don't, so don't get me wrong. Probably seventy five to eighty percent of the families in Canada, um, where you have both spouses working, where you have kids, it's next to impossible to get ahead. But through having two two people working, and let me explain it to you this way: the number one investment that can be made by a family is grocery shopping. So let so so let me get that out there because you don't see this published anywhere. The number one place someone can get the greatest return, the greatest investing return, is buying groceries. Because when you have time to shop for groceries, you have time to set budgets. You have time to shop the sales. The average family easily, easily can save 30% on their groceries. Now imagine buying a stock that returns 30% more money in your pocket at the end of the year. It is a staggering change because you got to remember that 30% saving is after tax dollars. It's also possibly taxed GST dollars on top of that that you say. It's a great way to offset some of the, uh, some of the, the, uh, uh, lack of income when you have one of the spouses stay home. So let's say that you have two people that work, Jim. In this case, you say you got, got to have a government worker. So let's say the wife has a great government job and she does, she really loves her job. She enjoys going to work every day. She enjoys putting in the time. She enjoys being able to have coffee at the cooler with the friends. She likes, uh, she likes, uh, the challenge of the job. And then let's say you have a husband and this is a guy who, uh, enjoys being home with the kids. This is a guy who, you know, would like to, to spend time uh, develop, developing his own kids as they grow instead of having them, uh, being developed by someone, say, in a daycare. So now we have daycare savings. Massive savings. Because you gotta remember, other than the tax deduction for daycare, you still are gonna get the government subsidy for your, the government transfers for your kids. So that money's coming into your house. Another huge swing that never is calculated. It's possible this family can now get by with one car instead of two. Or one transit pass versus two. Another huge savings. If it's a car, it's a massive savings. Because it's not only the car payment, it's the gas, it's the insurance, it's the maintenance, it's the depreciation, all of that. Huge saving. When the one spouse comes home, hopefully the husband has the meal cooked. Saving takeout orders. Because when both people are working, you're gonna to eat out more. It's just the way that, the, it's just the way that it goes. Maybe the husband is gonna plant a garden in the backyard. Because he's gonna grow some vegetables. Maybe he's gonna save another $2,000 a year doing that. These are all the things that um, people are learning again through this lockdown. Now, this is not from my viewpoint. This is from talking to dozens and dozens of millennials who have, who have been locked down. You know, I'm blessed, Jim. I get to talk to these people every single week, literally dozens every single week. And they're communicating that they're seeing things in a totally different light because of this this lockdown. And then when I make a comment to them, hey, did you know you can make the best the best financial advisor in Canada today is the stay-at-home parent who saves 30% on their grocery bill every week. You should see the look that comes across their face. Oh, I never thought about it that way. Well, of course not. You're under you're under pressure if both people are working. You're time constrained. You're under just an unbelievable amount of stress. I mean, just getting back in time to make sure someone's there to pick up the kids from childcare. Um, generally coming home, and now you have to do all the household chores. People are seeing that. And this is, we're hearing about this, um, the she recovery. Well, I'm saying... It's got to be a spouse recovery because why are we saying that it's women who are going to take these roles? 
there are a lot of men today who who are better suited to fill these roles. So I think what we're going to see is is we're going to see a new reality evolve, come out of this pandemic because there's a large cohort of uh, of families where they're going to see things from a different perspective. They're going to see what it's like going camping for a weekend or for a week versus flying down to Jamaica or Cuba for a week with the family. Instead of spending thousands of dollars, they only spend a thousand. Um, there are so many choices that we never face and we never see. I'm lucky because I see all of these choices that also meant different choices that so many different families have made over the years. I don't discredit one or credit another. I say that this is choice. What I also say is is that our, our governments have constrained our choices. Governments lead us down a path in the direction that they want us to follow. That direction is to spend more money because by us spending more money, the GDP of the country is higher. That doesn't do the family any good. The family has to look at how they can build wealth in the best way possible. Wealth is also health. How can our family be as healthy as possible? I mean, we just watched Jim as as flour was sold out across this country for almost three months at your local grocery store. You couldn't get a bag of flour. The previous 20 years, you had no problem walking in and getting a bag of flour every day because nobody was making their own bread. All of a sudden, people are realizing it's not just the cost of bread that it's saving, it's the taste of the bread. And they're, build, and they're now making bread themselves, even though the shelves now are filled back up with fat flour again. What the pandemic expo- exposes in real time is the difference between what you believe and reality. The reality is, if you go to a grocery sports store, and your bill is $70 because you bought products on sale versus $100, you have 30 more dollars in your pocket. If you was GST applicable, you might have $35 more in your pocket. You can take those $35 and invest it in the stock market. Buy bank stock. It'll pay a 6% dividend right now. And it's probably going to be that dividend in perpetuity, barring a depression. As we said in the show before, if there's a depression, it doesn't matter what investment you're holding, except maybe gold. And even that in 2020, we didn't know if that's even relevant anymore. Even though I have always said that housing prices and gold are polar opposites. They're on the opposite sides of the balance. When the housing market goes up in price, gold goes down. When the housing market goes down in price, gold goes up. So... I think what this listener in uh, Abbotsford is, is asking is, is that are more couples right now feeling the same way that they are? And I'll say yes. And I'll also say it's no longer just this woman going to stay at home and man going to work. That is so outdated. It's 20 years old. I have known families now, sold houses to families while I was selling houses years ago, where it was the, the dad who was staying home. And it was the mom who was going to work out, out working because she made more money. She enjoyed her job more than he did. She had a better job, a better career path. It sounds like these folks are just exemplifying uh, a lot of millennials that I'm talking to today. Ross, thank you so much for chatting with us. Hey, thanks for having me on, Jim. My guest has been home ownership consultant Ross K from the wealthy homeowner.ca. If you have any questions for Ross, you can send them to info at howstreet.com. Our YouTube channel is Talk Digital Network. Find us on Twitter at House Street. We're also on Facebook. I'm Jim Goddard. Thank you for listening. Comments made on HowStreet.com radio are an expression of opinion only and should not be construed in any matter whatsoever as recommendations to buy or sell any financial instrument at any time. Available online at TalkDigitalNetwork.com, HowStreet.com radio is a production of HowStreet Media Incorporated.